The Child Protection Conference is a meeting that's held when the concerns about a child's safety or well-being are so serious that professionals have a duty to meet and decide whether a child protection plan is needed to keep a child safe. Often, parents and young people are really worried about what will happen at a conference. And whilst this kind of meeting is a serious step, understanding what's involved and being properly prepared makes a really big difference. Children are best cared for by their own families. Devon is committed to supporting families to find their own solutions, working together to build on strengths and to improve their family life. When it's coming into child protection, I make initial contact with the family so I can explain to them my role in terms of chairing the meeting. Hello, hello, is that Connie? Hello, Connie. Uh, my name's Margaret Robinson. I'm the uh, child protection chair and I'm just ringing, nothing to worry about, I'm just ringing to go through one or two things with you before the meeting. Has anybody spoken to you already, the social worker, about if you needed to bring somebody for support? Are you, have you thought about anybody that might want to come with you besides Bruce? Yeah, I'm going to bring my mum. Okay, so that's, that's Tiffany, is it? That's your mum who you live with? Brilliant. So she's coming along as support. That's really good. Have you had any reports yet? You've had the social work report. Well, hopefully you'll also see some of the other reports before you come to the meeting. Anybody spoken to you about an advocate? All right. She did do that. She mentioned it, so you give me so. So there's somebody going to go and see James in school, is that right? Yeah. I think it's really important, actually, that the views of the children are heard. It's really empowering for them to be part of the process and be able to have their say. I think lots of things for children are taking out of their control but actually by being able to say how they feel and have adults actually listen to that I think it's really important. Hi James, nice to meet you. I'm Julie and I'm an advocate from NIAS. I'll show you my ID badge so you know who I am. So I'm here today to have a little chat about advocacy. So it's about, you know, you having your voice at a meeting. Is that okay? Yeah. So you can choose exactly what I write down. It's We can go through it afterwards and you can say, well, actually, no, I want to take that bit out or I'd like to leave that bit in. And then it's completely your choice. The only time that I wouldn't be able to take something out was if you told me something that I thought you weren't safe. And then I'd have to be able to tell the social worker about that. So I can't keep things a secret. And is that OK? Yeah. OK. Do you fancy maybe drawing a picture of your family so we can see what they look like? Um, okay. Yeah. Sometimes children do attend, but often, for younger children especially, they like to have the advocates share their views. It means that they can have their views heard because they're central to what's happening, but without them being there. Before the meeting begins, the chairperson meets with families to make sure they understand what will happen in the meeting and what will be said. Part of the Chair's role is to help parents and children have the confidence to take a full part in the meeting and there shouldn't be any surprises. Hi. Good morning, Hi. Hi. how can I help? Um, here, um, see, who is this? Uh, Margaret. Margaret. Margaret, um, yeah. okay. Bruce. What's your name please? Bruce. Connie. Bruce and Connie. Lovely. If you'd like to take a seat I'll give Bruce. you a call as I know you're here. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make sure and I'll keep checking out with you all the way through the meeting. Anything you want to add, anything you think's incorrect, things like that. I'll come back to you every now and then and make sure you know you're understanding what's what and you can ask me questions, but I'll keep checking in with you. Because what if someone says something that I'm not happy with, that I don't agree with, yeah. 
Yeah. What can I do about well, that? Well, you can say you don't agree with it, and I'll help you say that. Okay. But sometimes people do have to raise difficult things because they have to say what they're worried about. There's nothing really in this meeting that should come as a surprise to you. It's all information you should already have heard. Are you ready? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Come on, ready as you ever be. Come on yeah. then, let's go. I'll lead the way, then you know okay. where you're going. <laughs> The best outcome, I believe, is that children and families get the support that they need. So I think it's working in a positive way to identify what families do need and being able to provide that support. The purpose of child protection conferences is to have a succinct and clear plan to help families make the changes they need identifying what we can do to help them, what they can do to help themselves and what we can do together to move forward. At the start of a conference, people introduce themselves and the chairperson makes sure everyone understands the aims of the meeting. The chair needs to make sure that everyone can talk about the issues affecting the children honestly and that the meeting is successful in agreeing a clear, safe plan that everyone has confidence okay. in. All right. We are required today to share information to help us decide if these young children are at risk of significant harm. So we need to consider the following what we are worried about and how that is affecting the individual children, what is going well for the family, what strengths you have and how might these insights help reduce our concerns, what do we need to see happen to change things, what will our plan be and who will be responsible for each part of the plan. At the end of the meeting, we'll need to agree whether the child, the individual children, is experiencing significant harm, and if so, what category of harm is being suffered. During this meeting, of course, we will be discussing sensitive and personal information, and it's important to remind everyone that what we talk about today is confidential. My role today is to facilitate this meeting, to ensure that everyone here is listened to and treated with respect and encouraged to take part in the meeting. And I want to ensure that we leave today with a clear plan that helps keep these children safe and well. Everybody's had a chance to read the reports uh, which give the detail around the issues and we are going to try and summarise and bullet points. So we're going to start with the family and ask them what things what things are not working quite so well for you and your family? Okay. Well, yeah, I think I think for me the hardest thing is it's the house really. It's it's too small, and we haven't. We just need we need a better house. We need a house that has got space for me and all the family. I just feel like I just haven't got the energy for it. I just. I mean, it's only two bedrooms, isn't it? Yeah. The kids need with, somewhere with to play. It's ridiculous. And the baby on the way is mm. just too... It's Next relationship's so a bit tense at times. And yeah, trying to cope yeah. with all it's that. hard to keep the place tidy, isn't it? especially with twins as well. Okay. 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 It's hard to get out of the house and it's not always... I don't always make it because I just... Well, yeah. Some days you just wanna, you're just on the sofa, aren't you? I just can't, can't do it. Mm. Yeah, and what about the twins? Are you worried about the twins at all? The thing is, it's in our family, like, all the kids have been like it. They're just a bit slower than you might expect to do some of the things. So they're not, okay. they're not, crawl, like, crawling's not really happening at the moment. I mean, that doctor said about they're not putting on weight, said that, it, that he didn't, there was nothing wrong with them. But, I mean, they do eat, don't they? So I don't understand. Mm. So let's hear what James has been saying, shall we, from the advocate? He saw the advocate... Um, yeah, I met with James at school and he was really happy actually to come down and see me. Um, the first thing he wanted me to share with the meeting was a picture of his family. Oh, and so, and I asked him what kind of things made him happy. So he said his family made him happy and football made him happy. Oh, they were the true. things that, um, you know, football, football, no, so, yeah. Yeah. Football. So I've been trying to help, but it gets really tiring and I've been struggling with my school stuff. So he said he was really struggling with his homework. We're now going to go to the professionals and ask them what things they're worried about. I want particular focus from the professionals on the impact of those worries on the individual children. And we'll start with the social worker. We've had a chat about this, um, but, but I'll, I'll keep it quite short. Um, 
you talked about feeling a bit a bit low and a bit tearful and I think we've seen some of that recently um, and my, my worry is that um, you'd you've been working with mental health services before but you've missed a couple of appointments recently and I don't think that's going to help um, you're also sleeping a lot during the day and I, I know that things are very difficult and tiring but that does mean that you know some of the things that you need to do with the children are getting missed because of that um, James is, is taking Rosie to school as well as picking her up every day um, and while I appreciate what you said about it's you know it's good that James is so helpful and he's, he's really helping. The school have said that James is late to school every day so then what that's going to mean is that he's missing out on some parts of his education um, in, in order to make sure that Rosie is in education which is a really difficult position for him to be in. The house, I'm really pleased to hear you say that you recognise it's not ideal and it's, it's definitely not ideal and I think that Aside from uh, the difficulties with the size, I'm also a bit worried about the condition of the house. In terms of the twins, we, you talked about um, the, the doctor had seen them and said there was no organic reason and, and you know how you felt that James and Rosie were kind of a bit like they were at that age. Um, uh, and my worry is that, that you're, you're so tired that you're not able to give them the time um, that they need in order to learn. We're now going to move forward in terms of what is going well for the family. Uh, what actually are the strengths within the family? And the... One of the most important parts of the conference is understanding the family's strengths. The meeting will want to identify the personal resources, circles of support and community links the family have and those they can build on to improve the safety and well-being of the children. You have to start with health. Yeah, certainly. Um, so we were a bit worried about James and kind of his emotional well-being um, and his health and, and just being really tired in school. And I, I know that, Connie, I've had a conversation with you on the phone you do recognise that he's doing a lot and actually he might need some support with those things. As well about the twins, so Charlie and, and Jade. Um, so Connie, you have recognised that they're not really meeting their developmental milestones. Um, I think it's really, really positive that you went to see the paediatrician, even though you're finding it really difficult to leave the house some days. We've summarised on the board what the issues are and we're now going to move <coughs> to the stage of scaling. After the worries and strengths have been weighed up carefully, scaling is used in conferences to help people be clearer about their view of the children's safety. It's also an important way of seeing how things are changing over time and whether they're going in the right direction. Um, so I think for this particular concern, I think I would probably scale it at a I'm minded between five or six. I think given that you've been um, engaging with the paediatrician, that's really good. Um, and it is quite early days, you know, they are only still 10 months, so there's plenty of time for us to do something about it. <coughs> I think the difficulty is that we need to really recognise what's causing it. And so I'm, I'm minded to go for a six at this stage. But I think that actually there's a real good possibility for us to bring that down over time by working with the paediatrician and, and working on what, what the cause of it is. Um, in this aspect, I would agree with the social worker, I'll give it a six, because the family are willing to work with the help that's being offered. Yeah, and it's good that Dad's been here today and he's getting engaged as well and supporting Mum. Does anyone want to add anything to that? OK, so I'm going to go with six, if that's everyone's in agreement. OK, so we've, we've managed to, to put up on the board all the issues that everybody's worried about, including mum and dad, and looked at the strengths and where we can go forward. And now we really need to concentrate on the plan. Now, I want everybody to join in with this because what we want is an achievable plan for the family. We want to know what will SAFE look like. And those are the bits you've already talked to me about. Let's look at how we can get things cleaned up and back to a standard that you'd like for your children. How we're going to do that and who's going to do that and when are we going to do that by. We're going to link that in 
to your strengths because you've got some really good strengths. You've got good grandma, you've got a good bonds with your children, you've got ideas around where you want to be. We'll build on that and then for each bit we'll look at what's, what safe will look like. You'll have that all typed up in the right columns as will all the professionals with all their responsibilities as well. Other things might take a bit more time. You're just starting to address it. For example, Jade and Charlie's development. Social workers put in place an, an achievable goal. It's, it's 15 minutes or so playtime focus just on their needs to start to play with them, stimulate them, start to address their milestones and work together on that plan at every core group. When we, the core group meets, they will relook at that number, that number six, and depending on how things have gone, that number can be reduced. When I refer to the core group, there is a group of professionals that is identified and we're going to go through who those key people are to work with you and your family today. You are a member of the core group that will be mum and dad and grandma because you'd like her there for support and she's so involved in the family. Okay, thank you for that. We've made a date for the core group and a venue that you're all available for. And uh, at that core group, as I said, they will review the plan with you as part of that. I next chair a meeting in about two months' time to review whether a child, child, children need to remain on a plan. And we'll set a date for that now. Thank you very much for coming. I think you've done really well. You've really joined in the meeting. It's been really good. Okay. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The best outcome for a family is that they no longer need us in the future. Whatever that, that entails, it has to be tailored individually to the family, but the intention long term and the absolute best outcome is that we are no longer involved in that family's life because the children are safe. A conference is an important milestone for families, but it's really just the foundation for the partnerships that need to take hold over the following months. Throughout that process, we will keep listening to one another and working together to make a real and lasting difference.